Now let's move on to our third and last segment, succeeding in your career. So Cindy, uh, in, in, in your uh, uh, world, how is it to balance uh, everyone being ambitious and wanting to be a leader with also being a, a solid contributor as well? Actually, on the teams, I, you know, you're working with engineers, so a lot of these folks aren't naturally aggressively trying to be leaders. They're, 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 they, they bring their expertise along sure. to the team, and you've got to recognize and draw out their expertise and their, and their level of uh, what they're good at and, and bring that into the team to contribute to the team, and that just helps them further their career as well. Do you, any of you have any um, uh, kind of best practices to share along the lines of keeping, keeping focused at meetings and, and sort of rules of the road? Well, I consider myself to be somewhat old-fashioned. Um, I like taking handwritten notes. And it's, it's while uh, if I'm specifically taking notes and providing those to my colleagues, that's one thing. But more often than not, I'm doing it just so I remember what's taking place. Because we have many distractions, and as we leave the meeting room, we're tending to other projects or other needs. And so what was discussed in that room may flutter out of your brain almost instantly. Paula, do you um, uh, personally uh, have any uh, strategies in terms of basically uh, getting the most out of a meeting and then also making sure you're contributing? Keeping track of who's been contributing, who's been saying things. And if somebody hasn't said something in a while, even if it's not an area that maybe they know a lot about, say their name, draw them back into the meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing, too, is coming up with polite ways to get the meeting back on track which may be saying, you know what, this is a great discussion, but we're going to table it for now. Sure. Let's go back to this, because what we need to figure out now, sure. and just restate the purpose Absolutely. of the meeting and getting everyone back in that mindset. How does one deal with the idea of, of competition in a workplace? In my company now, there are several project engineers hired all at the same time, and so we're all competing for the same projects. Sure. Um, so it is definitely something that I'm aware of, but we all have our own specialties and I think it's important that you you know have those conversations with your boss about these are my specialties these are what projects I'm interested in, and not so much focus on the other person or the other engineers you have to focus on your own career and not necessarily on what someone else is doing but in that it's it's very important to uh, make sure that you find the opportunities that you want to move forward. It's not about who's better, it's, a, it's often about opportunity. And if you put yourself in position to be promoted. You do the best at the job that you've got. You do the, you network with people. You know, um, I had a supervisor once tell me, and I believe it's true, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Cindy, do you have anything to add and from, a, from a manager's perspective about sort of monitoring competition among uh, people working on teams or across teams? Again, being from a large company, there's so many opportunities to do special projects or hand off uh, special assignments that if you see someone that it looks like they're, they're not up operating to their full capacity or maybe could use some more mm -hmm. um, challenge in their job, there's plenty of special projects to go around and, you, and give them this other bit of experience or or exposure in another area. Maybe just a final word uh, from all of you on, uh, the, on your next uh, few years forward. So I've been at the company almost 30 years, like I said, and I probably have had 12 different careers at the company, but also geographically I've been able to move where I want to move. And there's such a variety in that and change because I'm constantly changing projects that it's just it's a fun place to work and I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to do that. For me personally, I'm very big on family. I want to have a good work-life balance. I want to be able to see my daughter grow up and my career is important, but I can't let that, for me personally, be the only driving force in my life. I want to move up to the next level and I believe that I'm in a position where in the next five years I could do that. So I'm at a place where there's a really steep learning curve in terms of all the different career hats you have to wear. So I'm really excited about, you know, really finessing my abilities in all of those areas, um, not just in terms of the specific kinds of roles that you play, but also the range of areas I work in, in yeah. the energy industry, yeah. and the range of areas I work in, in terms of geography. I changed industries about six months ago, so I have a lot to learn about all of the regulations. That's my uh, next endeavor for the short term, is uh, to kind of learn all of that and uh, work towards my professional engineering license. Over the next five years, 
I hope to continue to uh, communicate my successes to my, my uh, trainees, if you will, and also just making sure that me and my team members continue to do meaningful, interesting work because it's, in my mind with your career, particularly in research where it's, it's quite self-driven, um, you, you want to make sure that your interests, your skills, and your talents all align. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, it, it, it's the sky's the limit. Well, thank you all for a very engaging and informative conversation. Look online at www.asme.org for these segments and other career professional development and technical topics. Thank you.